In the previous videos, we have seen law of conservation of mass and law of definite proportions. Let's now dive further. Let's consider the formation of two compounds, water and hydrogen peroxide. Well, what is common between the two? Both of them are made up of the two elements, hydrogen and oxygen, right? Let's first consider the formation of water. Say, 2 grams of hydrogen combines with 16 grams of oxygen to form 18 grams of water. And for the formation of hydrogen peroxide, 2 grams of hydrogen combines with 32 grams of oxygen to form 34 grams of hydrogen peroxide. Now let's write both the reactions together to gain better clarity. We can see that the masses of hydrogen are fixed, that is 2 grams in both water and hydrogen peroxide. So if we take the ratio of the masses of oxygen in water and in hydrogen peroxide, it is 16 and 32. So the ratio comes out to be 1 is to 2. So they bear a simple whole number ratio of 1 is to 2. Well, this is the law given by John Dalton in 1803. And this law is called law of multiple proportion, which states that if two elements can combine to form more than one compound, the masses of one element that combine with the fixed mass of the other element are in the ratio of small whole numbers. So when we had two compounds, water and hydrogen peroxide, both the compounds were made up of same elements and we fix the mass of one of the elements and if we check the masses of the other element, they bear a simple whole number ratio. Let's verify it with now another example, okay? Here we have now nitrogen oxide, nitrogen dioxide and dinitrogen oxide, NO, NO2 and N2O. Now what is common? All these three compounds are made up of nitrogen and oxygen. Nitrogen having the atomic mass of 14 U and the mass of oxygen is 16 U, right? So the mass ratio of nitrogen and oxygen in NO can I say is 14 is to 16. In NO2 is 14 is to 32 and in N2O is 28 is to 16. So if we look at these three compounds, well, the mass of one of the elements has to be fixed, which is clearly not the case because we are considering three compounds here. Here, nitrogen is 14, here is 14 and here is 28. Here, oxygen is 16, here, oxygen is 32 and here, oxygen is 16. So, how do we verify law of multiple proportions here? Well, what do we do is, let's write all the three compounds once again in this manner and write the mass ratio of nitrogen and oxygen, all right? Now, here is the thing, we need to have fixed mass of one of the elements. That's the rule, that's something that we have to take care of. So what we can do is, let's just fix the nitrogen's mass here, let it be 28. Let me multiply this with 2 and let me multiply this with 2. So if you are multiplying nitrogen with 2, you have to multiply the mass of oxygen also with 2 in both the cases, right? So we can say now, if on fixing, I further can write it like this, that taking fixed mass of nitrogen, 28, 28, 28, the mass of the oxygen can be written 32 here. In NO2, the mass of oxygen becomes 64 as we have multiplied it by 2. And here we did nothing, right? It was already 28. So we are writing the mass of oxygen as it is. Now we can see that the mass of one of the elements, that is nitrogen here, has been fixed. Now let's see whether whole number ratio is coming or not for oxygen because we have already fixed one of the elements, that is nitrogen here. So what we can do is, we can simply divide the masses of oxygen by the smallest one, that is 16 here, to get the simple whole number ratio. Or you can directly write 32 is to 64 is to 16 and what you end up getting is, so 32 is to 64 is to 16. You can see that the ratio comes out to be 2 is to 4 is to 1, 
right? So even if you do 32 by 16, you get 2 here, 64 by 16, you get 4 here, 16 by 16, 1 here. Or you can directly take 32 is to 64 is to 16. The ratio is a simple whole number ratio that is 2 is to 4 is to 1. Now let's see whether you have understood law of multiple proportions or not with the help of this question. Check this out. Which of the following compounds illustrates the law of multiple proportions? Let's keep in mind what was law of multiple proportions. It stated that if two elements can combine to form more than one compound, the masses of one element that combine with the fixed mass of other element are in the ratio of small whole numbers. Now you can keep the law of multiple proportions in mind and give this question a shot. So you need to have compounds made up of same elements, right? Let's look at option A. We have hydrogen and chlorine, we have hydrogen and bromine. Clearly the compounds are made up of different elements, so A cannot be the answer. Well, CuO and Cu2O indeed looks like the answer, but let's hold on and see other options as well. If we see carbon dioxide and methane, CO2 and CH4, clearly the two compounds are made up of different elements. Carbon dioxide is made up of carbon and oxygen, whereas methane is made up of carbon and hydrogen. So this cannot be our answer. If we look at option D, we have H2O and D2O. Now this might look very tempting, but what do we have? We actually have the same compound, but made up of different isotopes. And hey, law of multiple proportions never mentioned anything about the isotopes. It said if we fix the mass of one element, the mass of other two elements were a simple whole number ratio. Whereas hydrogen and deuterium are nothing but isotopes. And what are isotopes? The elements with same atomic number but different mass numbers. So to understand this example better, you can write H2O and D2O like this, H2O where hydrogen has the mass number of 1 and H2O where hydrogen has the mass number of 2. So essentially they are same compounds. You have only difference of isotopes here but they are essentially the same compounds because they are made up of the same elements hydrogen and oxygen and law of multiple proportions is applicable on two different compounds made up of same elements so d cannot be our answer the only option we are left with is option b we have two compounds made up of copper and oxygen Okay, sounds good. So we have CuO and Cu2O. If we fix the masses of oxygen here and check out the masses of copper, it will be in the simple whole number ratio of 1 is to 2. So yeah, B is the right answer as law of multiple proportions is applicable here.